Tesla has been talking about self-driving cars for years and it's now made a pretty big step in Australia getting regulatory approval for what it calls full self-driving. There is one caveat, it's got supervised in brackets written straight after it, so it's not quite full self-driving, but it is now available and active on this car. I'm gonna take it for a first spin. Come along for the ride. So first step, you gotta put somewhere in the nav. You need to tell it where it's gonna go because uh, obviously otherwise it is gonna be um, driving a bit blind. So we're there, this is gonna be a short drive, about a kilometre, and you see it comes up with this. It says start FSD supervised, press and hold. So hold that down for a bit. It now says tap the brake to confirm. So I hit the brake, and now the car is in control. I still have to be ready to take over if it makes a mistake, because um, as I've learned, having lived with this thing for a couple of days, it can make little mistakes here and there. Uh, so I basically gotta be ready the whole time to take over. One thing there, there's a pothole that's not too big, but we did go straight into it. <laughs> um, the system can't pick up potholes yet, so apparently in the States they can, uh, they can find potholes. The software has been updated over there, but in Australia they tell me it's not going to spot potholes, it's not going to react. This is interesting, a car's just pulled out in front of me and just randomly stopped over there, So, but it did back off. We knocked off probably 15k an hour and it um, uh, picked it pretty well. One thing with the self-driving is it's constantly monitoring the driver to make sure that they're concentrating. So if you don't look, if you start gazing off or anything else, do something other than drive, basically, it'll get angry at you and it'll tell you to start concentrating. So you have to be pretty much as aware as you are if you were doing all the driving yourself. So this is the address I've put in. For some reason, it wants to take me around the corner, which I'm going to tell it not to do. So I've taken over and we'll park the car myself. All right, so next up, I want to take it to some busier spots, maybe a couple of car parks. Press and hold, tap the brake, and away we go. It generally drives pretty gently, so you're not, um, you're not about to set any lap records, but it's still, um, you know, it's going all right. We're in a 50 zone here, it's doing 48 k's an hour. It's doing an okay job with it. And you can set that as well. You can tell it if you want it to go slightly above, slightly below the speed limit, that sort of stuff. It's pretty smooth too, like pretty gentle in terms of the turns and the acceleration. Now that in some ways is good, right? Having a, a car that's taking control for you, do it sort of gently rather than darting around and you're wondering what it's gonna do next. It's pretty gentle in its lane changes. It's pretty um, relaxed generally. And it's, uh, it's sort of, doing it all in a manner that at least gives you a little bit of confidence that um, if you do have to take over, you know, you generally um, do have a fair bit of time to try and work it out. So I can see that car's turning left, but it can't see that that car's turning left or these ones. So we're getting stuck here for a while because it's just waiting for the roundabout to be clear. Whereas as I said, normally you'd probably just go because uh, you can see the cars there are turning. So it's a little bit slow with that sort of thing. Got a pothole here. Ooh, which it got. <laughs> Here's an interesting one, a pedestrian crossing. And it's spotted the child on the bike coming up and stopped pretty well, actually. It did an all right job. It's slowing down for speed humps, which is cool. It's figured out where they are and, and uh, slows down for the speed humps and looks after the car, which is pretty good. Here I'm, I don't know, 50 metres from the road and we're turning right. It hasn't started indicating yet. Um, now it has. <laughs> and we missed those lights partly because the cars were banked up there on the left. So instead of just turning a little bit to go around them, we got caught behind them and ended up getting a red light. Obviously it has to be able to recognise red lights, green lights and orange lights, So which it does. It brings them up on the display in there so suddenly you can see um, what's going on. And I've generally found it pretty good in terms of working out what the lights are doing and, uh, and when to respond and how to respond. Turned right there, we went straight into the middle lane instead of the right lane, which is interesting. Tesla uses only cameras in its cars to do all of this. So a lot of cars these days have radar, some have LiDAR, laser radar. Um, all pretty much have cameras. This one only has cameras. So it's uh, Tesla did away with radar and stuff and said, we're going to only use cameras. So basically it's a visibility thing. So if I was driving, I'd be over in that lane now because that's the, that's the lane I want to turn from. I've got a car coming up behind me that's also turning left. 
we have to turn left in 60 metres and now we've left it too late. So it's, now it's decided to indicate. It's got to look for a gap and we go across. But really we should have been in that lane way back there. I'm actually in this sort of situation. I've got a fair bit of confidence in it. It seems to be able to pick the lane markings pretty well. It's got a good idea of what other traffic's around. So it's doing pretty much what you expect. You do need to have what Tesla calls hardware for uh, on your, your Tesla to be able to utilize this latest full self-driving system. Um, you'd obviously have to check um, the software, the update, or check the, uh, the specs on the particular car you're looking at to make sure it can do it. There's a couple of things with that hardware for that um, were a step up. One is the cameras, higher resolution cameras to be able to see uh, more clearly to get better data basically. And the other one is the computer. So the, the computer that's doing all the calculations and they've obviously got to have redundancy built into that computer to make sure that if something stuffs up, if something goes wrong, the ones and zeros fly the wrong way, that it can uh, very quickly sort itself out and revert to that backup. We're turning left here and it's doing it. From this lane, there's a car behind me that would not be happy at all with that. So it hasn't moved into the left lane to do that left turn, which is a bit weird. Filtered into the traffic okay. And now interestingly, it's just changed lanes across a unbroken line, which I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to do. It's got a bit lost here. It's decided to take me in the opposite direction. Now I've got cars facing me, so I'm gonna to have to take over and say, no, we're not going that way. <laughs> it's sort of made a mistake there. Come up to a cyclist here, and it has spotted them as well as the pedestrian on the left. Ooh, we've come in the wrong way as well. So I'm gonna stop <laughs> and get out of there because that says no entry. So that's a reasonably good stuff up. Does a lot right, but it also does little things wrong here and there. And you just gotta be ready to <laughs> step in and say, no, we're not doing that. And this is the car park that I'm trying to go into. Whoa. Felt like it was going to try and go then. I was ready to hit the brake, but uh, it managed to stop. So coming up to a roadworks area here, which is, as I say, road closed ahead, resident access only, and detour. It looks like we're turning, I oh don't know, we're going, we're going around that <laughs> and heading down to what is very clearly a dead end. We are not getting through that. That's... Um, that's very clearly shut. So I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen here, but I suspect this might be when I get in and take over because there's nowhere to go. It wants to turn left here, um, but there's no way we are. I mean, the only way out of here is the way we came. So I think it's about time I took over. So that is my first experience of full self-driving supervised. Is it worth $10,100? Um, it's interesting because it, it, it's done a much better job than I thought it would, but equally, you realise you do need a human here. You need someone here concentrating the whole time, partly because the car forces you to, but also because it does make little mistakes, particularly when it comes to car parks and um, little things like that. I found a lot of the, the bigger picture stuff, the driving on, um, on faster roads, it actually did pretty well. But that time it got stuck at the roadworks, that was obviously another time when a human had to step in and try and figure things out. So for me, it's a bit of a proof of concept. It's amazing they've done such a good job to get it to this point, but there's so much further to go to get to full autonomy. If it was full autonomy, if it was absolutely the full whack, I reckon, yes, 10,000, probably not a bad spend. But at the moment, it's probably a bit more of a party trick than, um, than something that uh, I would think people are going to be using regularly that said peak hour traffic it's probably not a bad option to um to let you not have to worry about the stop start so much let the car do the thinking so um interesting though tesla is probably more advanced on this stuff than anyone else and it's um done a pretty good job not perfect but reasonable